Simple Steps Raster and Simulated Process Color Separations. This session we're going to get into understanding interlocking halftones. We're going to take a little bit more of an in-depth look at interlocking halftones. You know, in the screen printing industry, we often hear about flamenco printing dot on dot and that dot gains your best friend and things like this. And this is really, to be honest with you, this is very bad information. And, you know, as we're getting started in business or as we get down the road in business and we hear things, we take that information, we take you know, for granted that the source of that information is really giving us best practices. When in reality, if we do some evaluation, we can find out that maybe some of this really wasn't the best practice, that there was a failure or a disconnect related to the research that was done based on how they wanted their software or systems to rip halftones. When we were developing Simple Step Smart Rip and also Simple Steps Raster, we were looking at different ways of printing halftones for the best possible printing results. And you really want to take a look at things like dot gain, ink coverage, and things like that. And then when you look at flamenco, which is printing everything at 22 or 22.5 degrees, dot on top of dot, and then when you look at that under a microscope and a value, you realize there's a problem here. And then you come up with a strategy to do something that's better, and you get a better practice for doing things, or a best practice. And I really believe that understanding interlocking halftones relating to your simulated process, separations, ripping, and printing is the best practice. Let's go ahead and take a look at some things here because, you know, when we started out with some of the videos here for Simple Steps Reaction, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. We're just taking a look at hue and how the visible spectrum of light or color works. And I wanted to kind of revisit that in this session so we can see how we can play upon that and understand how we want to rip our halftones for color blending so that we can actually get very good color simulation. So we'll start out here with our simple color band or spectrum of light or color. And we know we've got our 360 degrees of hue here and then I've got the original image here. Beneath that I have the same image here separated into 12 colors. Now usually when you're dealing with simulated process, that's what they're thinking when they're thinking about many different colors because they're going to be printing in flamenco. And beneath this I've done a separation with Simple Step Smart Rip into a flamenco six colors of this original graphic. Now you can see that the representation here has some issues. And if we zoom in really close, let's say looking at the cyan blending into the yellow, we can see that what's happening here is that we're going to be printing dot on top of dot. That's flamenco, everything at 22 or 22.5 degrees. Now what happens here is that one color steps on another, especially when we're dealing with our high opacity inks. Not only that, we have the substrate coming through through the background, and that creates issues in our printing. And so often what happens is when we're looking at simulated process and color blending and things like that, and we try it out and it doesn't really work, we get frustrated. We're like, well, what's wrong here? Well, when we make a good analysis of what halftones are, how they really work and how to really work with them, and what are the best tools and best practices to use, then we can start to see that there's been some problems in the industry relating to how halftones have been presented and what we thought relating to best practices. Because we can see that this is not a very good representation of these color blends. If I take this image and I go bitmaps, convert to bitmap, 300 dpi, and let that process, you can see that these blends are not correct. And what's happening here? The yellow is stepping on the red. Now if I had the red printing on the yellow, then the red would be stepping on the yellow or blocking it out, as you can see here. Same thing here. Now what they'll do to try and compensate for this, and this is why you see the 12 and 14 color automatics, is they'll try to compensate for this by adding additional colors to the print. So where they can't simulate the orange, they'll actually try to print it. But you're still going to end up with, yes, less of a margin of error, but it's still going to be there and you're going to get banding and your gradients aren't going to be correct. Now here beneath this, I have a six color set up as interlocking halftones, a very different approach. Now, what you want to think about when you're dealing with interlocking is any place that you have two colors blending together, you're going to interlock those so that you're not printing dot on top of dot. You're not printing ink on top of ink. You're printing ink next to ink or dots interlocked to each other in the actual separations or ink. Because here you can see where the red and the yellow is. Now, there's your red and your yellow, but your red is kind of I guess printed next to, or we've taken the red and knocked it out of the yellow. I'll go ahead and move these down here and we'll see which color we get to the first so we can take a closer look at this. Here's our yellow. Now you'll notice that when I move this, 
you can see that these dots are different. It's a different type of halftone dot. Now our customers or clients or users have been using this and you can see you'd print your red halftone dot and then print your yellow right into it. Now let's take a look at the difference you're gonna get in your color blending or your color printing or halftone continuous tone simulation. Bitmap, convert to bitmap, and we'll convert that and we can see the difference that we're gonna get in our print and how much more accurate the actual simulation is compared to the original. Now when we look at that from a distance, and that's what your eyes gonna do from a distance, it's gonna simulate that yellow because your eyes can't make out those small dots. They automatically kind of blur it or they create the color that those two colors come together would actually make because that's how your eyes work. Now the other benefit to this is also, and we'll take a look at this, ink coverage. If you look at ink coverage, ink coverage is you know, when you pull your squeegee back, how much ink is covering the actual image. Well here going with 12 colors, you're gonna have much more ink on the garment. You're gonna have a lot more ink coverage and you really aren't optimizing your ink coverage to really cover the entire area of the print and get the best possible color reproduction quality, but here with interlocking you are. And that's really the difference. And we can see that here. Even when I blur this out so you see some of the simulation a little bit better, you can see that here in the 12 color and the 6 color, you get this banding and you're losing areas of color. Or these areas are being changed to tints as opposed to being the color they actually are. But we see up in here, that's not happening. And that's really what interlocking is about. So when we're doing interlocking, the strategy that we're following here is that we want to interlock wherever the colors blend. Let me go ahead and break this down for you just a little bit here. And you can see all of these. And basically our interlocks are working so that we start out with red. Red is a regular halftone dot. Now the yellow is blending into the red and the green. So the green is a regular halftone dot. But the yellow has been set to an interlock. Let's go ahead and move these down here and I'll get to where we've got just that green. And we can see that here. Now if I hold down Alt, I can select the yellow and we can just move that and you can see that there. And you can see that these two are regular halftone dots but the yellow is a knockout. Now right click and you can see there's the knockout of the dots from the red and the green here. So that these are going to be interlocked like the pieces of a puzzle, giving you much better simulation, much better ink coverage, etc. So it's a really huge advantage for your halftone printing and simulated process printing, being able to work with interlocking halftones effectively. Now here's an image that we separate just a three color and you come in here and look, I set up the black as an interlock, but the cyan and the blue are still set up as regular dots. So every time you look at the images when you're separating, here's Spider-Man. This is just red, a blue, or actually an azure, and black. Now, once again, these halftones don't look very good. They don't render very well in Corel Draw, but you can see how that's working. So because I wouldn't want to be stepping on this blue and this red with the black the print wouldn't come out as good. And here it is, I blurred it and set it up to simulate what a real print would look like. And you can see as long as I'm not stepping on that blue or that red with the black, I've got this down to three colors. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we'd actually separate something like this Spider-Man and then think about the strategy about how we would want to use our interlocking. Once again, it's always a strategy. You know, what colors do you have blending? If you've got three or four colors blending, wherever those colors are blending, that's where you want to use the interlocking strategically. I'm going to go ahead and we'll go to our advanced tools here. And I'll go ahead and resize this down to about eight inches or so, just for the demonstration purposes here in the video. And I'll go to Simple Steps Raster. And the first thing I'll do is I'll make an evaluation. So I'm going to go here to my Click Steps. And with that selected, I'm just going to go with my standard hue just so I can evaluate what color is in there. Let that process. And then I'll zoom out here and I'll find him over here. And I can see that this is really, you know, there is some cyan in here. But we could get away with not using that just by using the regular blue. And then you've got red. There's some orange here. But that orange we could actually just use as a red right in there. We could really print this as two colors. I mean, if you really wanted to go up to all the colors and things like that, that'd be fine, but I think we'll be fine with just three colors. So to separate this, what I would do is, I'm not gonna need this page anymore either. I would just go here to, let's say my Auto Steps tab, and I'll select my 
red, and I know that my blue is going to come out of these two blues here. We'll go with the six hue so we get everything. I might want to take the yellow, and I can just convert that to red also. Then I'll come here to my click steps, and I'll select my black. I'll go ahead and click on click steps, and we'll let that process. Now once that's finished processing, I'll have my color separation here. And there's my Spider-Man setup. Now I know that I'm going to be dealing with a couple of things here. I've got this object properties here, and I want to actually I want to go to manage, excuse me, object manager. I'll come down here. Now where I've got the blue and the cyan together, I could print those separately. And I just grab the yellow. I want the blue. I'm just here in the object manager. I'm holding down shift to select both of these and bring these out. And I can see that, you know, that's that blue that's there. But let me go ahead and duplicate that. And what I'll do is I'll actually take these two and I'll just come down and click on something like this blue here just to change them. Then I can come down here to my outline properties because these are monochrome bitmaps. Go to more and I can just make this 255 by 128, which would be my Azure color. Select OK. Select OK. And you can see that that's really sort of the color that we've got there already. Select that blue and cyan. And you can see that there. Not much of a difference at all going from two colors down to one color. Now, when you're thinking about that, really what you're looking at is that you're looking at your color that's in here and you're saying, well, I just pulled the cyan and the blue, but really that color is more of an azure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those two together and use them as just an azure. We eliminate a color by using the colors closest, coming off the six hues. Of course, I could have done that in the 12 hues also, but I've gotten a 12 hues separation. I covered that in another video. So that that's going to be the case with those two. I'll go ahead and want to ungroup here and delete these two. And I'll take these again, cyan and blue. And I'm just going to go to my outline properties here, select that blue, and I'll go ahead and change these. I actually want to go to more here and 255 by 120. 7, which is your Azure and RGB, select OK. Select OK, and you can make that any color you want, but I've just eliminated that. And then I'm going to take this red and this yellow, and for that, I'll just come over here and right-click in the red, because I didn't really need to print that yellow. I mean, if you wanted to, you could. You can see some change there. It's really a judgment call. If you want that yellow in there, you can print it. But I, sometimes I'll look and I'll say, well, you know what? I can bring this down in color. It's going to be close enough and still get it on, say, a four-color press or something like that. Right-click and change that. Or I could do the yellow as, say, a white and still get the highlight there and not print the yellow at all, as you can see there. And I still get a good look without the yellow on the t-shirt. It's really a judgment call on who your client is, how many colors they're comfortable with. But you can see here we're going to be able to print this on a white shirt with just three colors. Now, knowing that I have the red and the blue, and I'm bringing this over here to my page, in this graphic and it's blending a lot with the black. Now if I had yellow blending the red to make my orange then I'd probably interlock one of those colors. But in this case what I'm going to do is I'll interlock the black and print the yellow, excuse me, not the yellow, but the red and the blue as normal. And to do that I would go to my advanced tools. Here I'll go to Simple Steps 4 and I'll bring this over here. And first thing I'll do is go to color management. Now this is going to change this to Pantone colors. I'll click on create selection palette, red, black, and blue, select all, one click conversion, select OK, come down here to separations. I'm going to go to half tones. I'm going to change my processing here to say 1500. I've got a pretty powerful computer. If you've got a low end computer, 1200 will be fine, but I'll change this to say 1800. Dot gain is critical. I won't use it here, but you know, you probably want to use at least 1.75 and you still might get some dot gain. There's a video on the website that'll show you about doing your dot gain readings and you can set up a custom curve right here for your Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0 and I highly recommend that. My black, I'm going to interlock. And then the blue and the red, I won't interlock. Then I'll go ahead, if I'm going for all black output, I'll go ahead and click on generate separations and let that process. Now, once that's finished processing, I'll have my live halftone preview in Corel Draw. And once again, as I said, these halftones don't render very well on your monitor in Corel Draw, but we can zoom in and take a look at these. And we can see that our halftones here are interlocking the red to the black. Now, for the sake of understanding, let's take a look and see what would happen if we separated this without the interlocking. And I'll come here to halftones. Not going to need to change everything, anything, and I'll click on 
generate separations. So we'll take a look at flamenco versus the interlocking halftones on this three color print. And then we can see why the ink coverage is so important. Now once that's finished processing, I'll just go ahead and copy this. And I'll go through my pages here to where I have the other halftone preview, which would be right here. I'll go ahead and move this up. Now here at the top is our interlocking, paste this in. And here's our non interlocking. Now you can start to see some of the differences in the blending here and you can see that the black is printing over and it's going to step on the red. So we're not going to get that full red out of there. Let's go ahead and preview these. Let's just go to bitmaps, convert to bitmaps, 300 dpi and select OK. And see how that black stepping on our red is going to affect our print. And you can see a traumatic difference here of how that's going to print out. And if I go bitmaps, blur, Gaussian blur, one pixel, select OK, we can see the simulation. We can see what's happening here. The difference between an interlocking print, the vibrance and the way the color blending works, as opposed to a flamenco print. So we can see that working with interlocking, we have the ability to get better ink coverage and better prints because if you look at our ink coverage here, we're getting a lot more white or substrate here because these dots are all going on top of each other. Whereas here with the interlocking, the dots are not on top of each other and we're getting better spread or ink coverage. We're also gonna get better printing or better color simulation and results through interlocking as opposed to the flamenco, which is sort of an interesting standard as I said, and we can see that here. Now, the fact is, if we move the black back in the flamenco, if I right click on this and say order to back of page, change my printing order, now we can see we're getting the red printing over or on top of the black. As you can see, the half tones here directly on top of the black. And we call this stepping on color. In other words, one color stepping on another. That explains why, as I said earlier, you see the big shops with the automatics using 12 or 13 colors working with this printing process, when in reality it's not necessary. You can print with very few colors as long as you're using the correct half toning for your printing. And you can see that if we take this back, we'll go ahead and copy these here, and we'll go back to our original here. We'll paste these in and bring them back over here to where our original was. And we'll go bitmaps, convert to bitmap again, select OK and we'll see which one looks most like the original. And obviously it's going to be the interlocking one because interlocking really is, as I said, your best practice for halftone printing. Go ahead and bring these up in size here. Let's give these a blur bitmap, blur Gaussian blur. Now they look a little bit faded out because they're actually the Pantone colors as opposed to the red, but you can see a huge difference in the accuracy of the two. Once again, this red looks much more vibrant because it's the RGB red, and this has been converted to a Pantone red, which is supposed to simulate paper printing again, as opposed to t-shirt printing, which is a different kind of ink. It's a little bit more washed out and really doesn't represent plastisol inks very well. But you can see a dramatic difference based on the type of half tones that you're using. So remember, your interlocking is really meant for your blends. As you can see here, as I went over earlier, if you get into an area where you've got red and yellow and green blending, then you just print the green and the red as normal and interlock the yellow. Or if you have black blending in the red, such as here where we have the blue and the red blending into the black, we're going to want to interlock the black and then print the blue and the red as regular halftones. So we get the full advantage of our interlocking for our simulated process printing. So go ahead and wrap here relating to, I guess you could say the basics of interlocking. And I'll try to get into some more videos about interlocking and things like here, like that here in the next couple of weeks. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next video.